think I'll be a good dad, though. You know, I do. <laughs> no, I analyze it. I don't. I've actually come, finally come to the point. I want to have a kid, and I don't think it's that hard. I don't. Part of me really believes that, and the other part is I just like pissing off people with kids. You know, <laughs> whenever you say shit like that, oh, dude, you have no idea how difficult it is. This is a great one to say. Well, I mean, I got a dog. I mean, you know, how much stuff? Dude, you can't even fucking compare it to a dog. Yeah, I can. I just did, and I'll do it again. <laughs> Mine's got four legs. Yours only has two. Go ahead. <laughs> Yours bites someone and gets a timeout. Mine gets put down. <laughs> Stakes are raised. No, I think I know. I think I know how to raise a kid. You know what it is? You just, you just play catch with them. I think that's the big deal, man. That's how you raise a kid. You play catch with them. You just talk about life. You distract them by throwing the ball. They don't even notice. You're filling their heads up with your theories. <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't do it the old school way, the way your parents used to. Sit down across from you. You want to tell me about your day? Did anybody offer you any drugs? You're learning about sex? You're like, dude, you're fucking freaking me out. <laughs> Trying to eat a Pop-Tart here, right? <laughs> no, you're just taking them back. You play catch with them. That's it, you talk about life, right? What's that, son? Ah, we're not going to church today, fuck that. <laughs> That's all a bunch of bullshit. God's everywhere, but I gotta go down there to see him, really? And he's mad at me down there and I owe you money? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Just cry, not stupid. It's ridiculous. It's in here, all right? It's not down, it's in here. They try to take it, it's, down, it's in here. You do something good, you feel good. You do something bad, you feel bad, you know? Unless you're like a sociopath and you don't feel shit, you know? <laughs> Unless you got somebody duct taped upside down in your apartment, you know? And, and if you do something like that, I want you to feel like you can come to me, you know? <laughs> yeah, come to me, confess all of that. We'll go down to the precinct, we'll tell them everything. Yeah, I'm gonna turn you in. This isn't fucking Dexter. What are you, you mind? There's some feel-good serial killer walking around. He only kills the, the bad people. Listen, I know your mother and I, we've been arguing a lot lately, all right? But I know, you, know, you know I love her. I love her to death, okay? It's weird. I love her to death, but when I watch her eat toast, I just want to, I just want to choke her. I don't know what it is. It's, like, it's the routine, right? Left, then the middle. Just, why don't you just fold it in half and fucking eat it? You know what I mean? It's unreal. You know? That's, that, that's when you know, you, you know you met the right one. When you want to slap the shit out of him, but you don't. You know? You want to leave, but you don't. There's something about him. You just can't fucking leave. Right? So don't settle down till you meet one like that. That's, that's when you know. Till then, you know, put a condom on, you know? Just bang as many as you can so you don't have a midlife crisis. That's what you do. Don't tell your mother I'm telling you any of this shit either. <laughs> yeah. That's my, uh, that's, that's my game plan. Actually, Nerd Jesus died in the last year, right? Steve Jobs. Yeah, he died, right? I know, I know, a lot of nerds here tonight. I know, you're sad. I didn't get it. I didn't get the big deal they made about that guy. When he died, they were like, he changed the world. That was insane. He changed the world. The world was one way, and then Steve Jobs came, and it was another. What did he do? Somebody, for the love of God, what the fuck did that guy do? What did he do? He told other people what to invent? I want my entire music collection in that phone. Get on it! <laughs> right? And then these poor, nameless, faceless scientists gotta go in a back room and figure it out. How the fuck are we gonna get all of this into this? I mean, what year does this guy think this is? This is crazy. This is like Buck Rogers. Dude, my kid has a birthday in like 11 months. Steve Jobs just walking by. I don't hear any thinking going on in there. Just strutting around the office, eating some pretentious fruit like a pear, right? <laughs> Just throwing out ideas. There's another one. There's another one I just came up with on the way to work. I was reading a magazine the other day, turning pages, you know? I like to turn pages on a screen that aren't even there. Yeah, wrap your fucking heads around that, guys! 
see you in eight years. Where you going, Michael? Big, little, big, little, get on it! Right? Then all these people slave away to make his vision come true. And then they have the big nerd fest, right? Down there, Comic-Con, and all their nerd mecca. They are all showing up with their acne and their Hulk shirts, limping into the arena, right? Does Steve Jobs go out with a whole chorus line of scientists? No, he goes out there by himself. Sneakers and no belt, like it was no biggie, right? <laughs> like he's, like he's Tesla, <laughs> tapping into the atmosphere. I know, this is always uncomfortable. I know, you bought into it, right? That whole advertising, the way they aligned themselves with some of the greatest people of all time. Jesus, Gandhi, me! <laughs> Remember that? Muhammad Ali, John Lennon, this guy! How the fuck was that dude like any of them? Gandhi didn't have a sweatshop. Nah, he didn't have people leaping to their deaths only to get, catch a net and get ricocheted back through the window to have to put together yet another iPad. John Lennon didn't have children in his basement pressing those fucking albums. I know, I know. New phone can't fit the old charger. This is your hero? This is the guy? This is what all the silence is about? I don't know what it is. I don't know what the fuck is going on. But I think white women started it. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. The fucking worst. It's all they do is bitch mode and complain. I had no idea how difficult it was to be a white woman in the United States of America. <laughs> Evidently, it's, it's really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're always bitching. Do you have any idea what it's like to be me? Well, I imagine it would be slightly less awesome than my life. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to you today, sweetheart, huh? Did they not chill your rosé, you know? <laughs> Was the trolley not running down at the mall? What happened? <laughs> no, it's unreal. I'm really fucking annoyed how white women have the fucking balls to throw my white privilege in my face, you know? <laughs> Sorry to separate themselves from these white males with their white male privilege. It's like, bitch, you're sitting in the jacuzzi with me. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, put your fucking whining. Look right out of the gate, all right? If you're fucking, if you live in some honey boo boo lifestyle on the Appalachian Trail, you know, your uncle just banged you in the dirt. All right, I can listen to you. Now, one of my fantasies is I want to drive by like a woman's rally and just say the most sexist shit I can think of just to watch them lose their minds. You know, just drive by real slow and be like, yeah, why don't you get back in the kitchen where you belong? <laughs> <laughs> just to look in the rearview mirror, watching them fly, <laughs> flipping out in the road, spinning around like Leatherface at the end of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a very, uh, I don't know, times are changing, I guess. I don't know. Whatever, whatever you're into, you're into, but I don't know, I'm not into that religious stuff where, uh, and this is why, I actually walked away from my religion, just, I had to be honest with myself. One, I didn't like to go, in, I didn't like going to church every week, you know? <laughs> I just didn't. Part of it was I'm lazy, I don't like getting up on Sunday, and the other part was I already heard all the stories, okay? <laughs> Heard it three, four times. The dude hasn't come back yet. You know, we're just sort of mulching over the same shit here. I got it. Right? And then the other aspect was, you know, I actually, uh, I had to be honest with myself. I felt my religion made sense and everybody else's sounded stupid. <laughs> I did. Look, the, I'm not talking about the basis of every religion. The basis of every religion makes sense. You know, the Ten Commandments, right? Don't kill anybody. Don't touch my wife, that's my bike, right? <laughs> that all 
don't make sense. Of which I've broken, I think I've broken just about every commandment except for the fifth one. That's it. I haven't killed anybody yet, all right? But the murderous thoughts that I have sometimes, I, I think I could do it. Like when someone gets on a plane and they kick off their loafers and they're wearing those gold toe like dress socks. And they cross their feet at the ankles and they, they just start rubbing their feet together. Like I, I see the whole thing. See the whole thing. Wrapping that sock. I see the whole thing, so we'll see. <laughs> Still early on, right? But just the stories of how we got here and where we're going and what happens after we die. Everybody else's religion sounded stupid, you know? Like I live out in Los Angeles, there's a bunch of Scientologists out there. And the first time I heard the story of Scientology, I was like, that is the dumbest shit. <laughs> I have ever heard in my life. Yeah. Like, your, your guy's name is Ron. <laughs> Ron. And he wasn't alive thousands of years ago, so you can hide a lot of it in the mystery. This guy was alive like 45, 50 years ago. He had a driver's license. <laughs> Social security number, there's like footage of him stubbing his toe, motherfucker, right? <laughs> and I don't know what happened. He was working at Denny's. He got sick of it. He's like, oh, I'll start a religion. Hey, everybody, there's a spaceship coming back. Everybody's getting sneakers. This is Tom Cruise. We're gonna try to make you clear, right? Now, look, I'm paraphrasing. A paraphrase. <laughs> to be fair to the Scientologists, I am paraphrasing. But that's essentially what they believe in. And I said that is the dumbest shit I ever heard while simultaneously still kind of believing that a woman who never got fucked had a baby that walked on water, died, and came back three days later. So. Total sense to me. So it just hit me one day. I was just like, well, why, why does that make sense? And that shit doesn't, you know? They got a spaceship in theirs, you know? We, right? We had the space shuttle, you know? There's sneakers. There's a lot of shit I can relate to in this. <laughs> why does that sound so dumb to me? I don't know, you know what it is? You know, I think it's because I heard their story when I was an adult. I heard my story when I was like four years old, right? When I heard my story, there was still some fat fuck coming down the chimney, giving me Christmas toys. If I lost a tooth, there was a fairy. There was an Easter bunny. Why wouldn't there be some bearded baby moonwalking across the lake? <laughs> throwing out bottomless buckets of shrimp or whatever the, whatever he did. <laughs> of course that made sense. But what happened was as I got older, all of that stuff started to fall, right? Like, ah, son, there's, there's no fat fuck. It's your mother and I. Your mom's the tooth fairy. Rabbits don't have eggs. Her tits are fake. The NBA's fixed. <laughs> Bankers are cunts. Most of your dreams won't come true, right? And I was just like, wow, this is how the world is. And meanwhile, this shit was just floating, this 800-pound gorilla of this fucking story. And I just had to make a decision. What am I going to do? What am I going to do with this? Am I gonna cling to it, be that person, you know? That's very offensive to me and other Christians and damn, damn, become that douche, right? I mean, be like the casual Christian, right? With like, you know, some one foot on base and just, yeah, I kind of go a couple times a year and like, my parents come to town. 
I act like I go all the time and I don't go anymore. <laughs> well, my last option, which was basically just, just let go of the shit, you know? Just let go. Just let go of it like, like that creepy moment in curling, you know? <laughs> you know that moment where the shooter, whatever, whatever you call him, is just sliding with that rock, right? Just, let me do this right, just slide. <laughs> and you think he's along for the ride, the two of them, they're a team, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he just goes fucking. <laughs> That rock just keeps going. And this dude just stops. That's what I did with my religion. I just, I just let go of it. I didn't read a riot act to anybody. I just, I just, I just let go of it. And on the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the. I just, I just floated away. No, it's fucking nuts. People are so scared now. You now have you have the male feminist. Like, where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> Just out of nowhere. Last couple years, I'm a male feminist. Uh, I've always championed women. No, you haven't. You haven't. This shit came out, and you're fucking scared. You did something. You grabbed some fucking titties. What the fuck did you do that you have to overcorrect that fucking hard? What kind of a man? who still has his balls, is walking around saying that he's a male feminist. Uh, I'm a male feminist. I totally see the way you see the fucking world. It's, it's impossible as a man who was raised right. <laughs> <laughs> to be a feminist. You can't do it, you're a man. Look, you, you, you can agree with it, you can empathize, sympathy, you can do all of that shit, but you can't be it any more than I can stand here and just be like, I'm a Black Panther! Fight the power! <laughs> and then I walk out the door, a blue-eyed white dude, and I get to live that fucking life, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, ladies. I don't buy it. Maybe, maybe you do, I don't. Anytime I hear a guy say I'm a male feminist, I always just think that is the most pathetic, limp dick way ever to try and get some pussy, right? Like that's literally, that is literally the fucking game you had when you were on a first date when you were 16, you were all nervous and your whole game plan was just agree with her, maybe she'll touch it. <laughs> so what are your favorite bands? I like whatever you like. Will you touch it now? Did I do it right? <laughs> so at the end of the hour, they come to the logical conclusion. They're like, there is no reason to hit a woman. There is no reason to hit a woman. And I was just like, really? I could give you like 17 right off the top of my head. You could wake me from a drunken stupor. I could still give you like nine. Dude, there's plenty of reasons to hit a woman. You just don't do it. But to sit there and suggest that there's no reason. <laughs> Dude, the level of ego behind that statement. What are you, levitating above the rest of us? You're never annoying. <laughs> Women, how many times have you thought about slapping your, your fucking guy in the head this week? Every day. There you go. <laughs> Every day. You didn't do it, right? Oh, dude, it drives me nuts. There's no reason, there's no reason. Really, no reason? How about this, you marry a girl, you fall in love, you buy her a house. You go to work every day, paying off the house. You come home one day, she's banging the next door neighbor, hands you divorce papers, you gotta move out, sleep on a futon, and still pay for that house that she's gonna stay in. No reason. <laughs> I'm not saying you should do it, but there's plenty of fucking reasons in that arc of a story. All right, that was a hypothetical. You want an actual story? I'll give you one, I'll give you one. All right, I fucked up my foot playing drums, trying to get my bass drum foot as fast as uh, John Bonham's, because I figured that's a good thing to focus on. 43 years of age, never married, no kids. I figured this, this is gonna lead me to the light, right? This, this, this is what I need to do. 
So I don't know what I did. I, I felt like after I played for like an hour, and afterwards I felt like literally like there was some midget stabbing me in the bottom of my foot, right? Like I had lightning coming out of the bottom of my foot. So I did the typical guy thing. I'm like, I'm not going to the hospital. I'll sleep it off. I'll be fine, right? Next morning I wake up, my foot's even worse, and I gotta walk my crazy dog. So I'm like, I can't do it. My foot's killing me. So I wake up, my girl I go, sweetheart, sweetheart, can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? Can, can you walk the dog for me? Can you uh, just take the shift? You know, I'll do your afternoon shift. Can you just do me this song? Can you do this for me? And she's just like, oh. You know, I had a late, late night last night. I'm tired. I have a big day. And I just go, fuck it. <laughs> she goes, what do you mean, fuck it? It's like, why can't you just say no? Why do you always gotta like waterboard me with like a 20 minute explanation that eventually winds its way around to go fuck yourself? Just say no. So I'm just limping out of the room. Whatever, go back to bed. You got a big day, right? So now I'm like limping down the street. I got like Tourette's, fuck goddamn bullshit. Dog's walking next to me. And I gotta admit, I got a little childish. I did, I got a little childish, you know? I was just thinking about my relationship. I'm like, this, this is the relationship I'm in? You just gonna do whatever the hell you wanna do, all right? And fuck me? Fine, I'm gonna do whatever the hell I wanna do. I feel like listening to my iPod on full blast, walking around the house. That's what I'm gonna do. So that's what I did. Turned it all the way up, and I just, I, my whole plan was just to walk by her like I didn't even know her. That was it, she came down the hall, I just ghosted her. Just walked right past her. <laughs> just trying to piss her off. And I gotta tell you something, work like a charm. Worked like a charm. Yeah, hung my coat up, turned around. By the time I turned around, she was already yelling at me. But the music was so loud, not only could I not hear her, it actually looked like she was singing the song that I was listening to. Oh, it's one of the highlights of the relationship. So I knew what she was saying. I was like, whatever, I don't want to talk about it. Leave me alone. I'm going on to the computer, right? So I limp over and I sit down, and unbeknownst to me, she's like, no, we're going to talk about this right now. Comes out, poo, and slaps the headphones off my head. I got a big, I got big ears, it fucking hurt. So I'm like, honey, leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. Put the headphones back on. She comes right back up again. Poo, slaps them off a little harder. This time they spin halfway around my head. Caveman DNA starts coming up, talking through my teeth. Honey, leave me alone. Don't want to talk about it, right? Put them on third time, she comes up. Poo, slaps them right across the room and I snap. I'm like, fine, you want to have the fight? Let's fucking have the fight. She's like, we will discuss this later when you calm down. Right there. I just wanted to roll her up on her yoga mat and stuff her behind the couch. Just leave her there till she got thirsty. Come on, let me out of here. I, I have a spin class. You've made your point. This is, this is ridiculous. No, that's the thing. Really is, that's the thing. I, I hate that saying there's no reason. Obviously, I'm not saying to hit a woman, you know? But saying there's no reason, I think that's crazy. When you say there's no reason, that kills any sort of examination as to how two people ended up at that, at that place. If you say there's no reason, whoo, you cut out the buildup, you just left with the act. How are you gonna solve it if you don't figure it out? Look how awkward it is in here right now. I said you shouldn't hit a woman. I'm just saying, how come you can't ask questions? You can only ask questions about what the guy did. You can never ask about the woman. Why is that? Why is that? What is that? What does is, what is answer him right mean? What does that mean? Are you the idiot who got up halfway through the special during the bit and you're like walking around like I'm not fucking taping a special here? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Fucking had to ignore all of that and now you're gonna like yell out? And not only that, yell something that makes no fucking sense whatsoever? Answer him, answer him. Every fucking special I do, there's always one. <laughs> always, right down the fucking middle. Talking about hitting women, sweetheart. And I think you just added another reason. Jesus fucking Christ. I love this, I'm not even in a relationship with her and she's fucking nagging me. I'm afraid to get married, man. Why, would, why wouldn't, as, why man wouldn't be afraid to get married at this point? You know, look at Kobe. Look at the shit he's going through right now. All right? Guy's getting a divorce. His wife's gonna get 70 million bucks. Never hit a layup in her life. You know? Can anybody explain these divorce settlements? Can anybody make sense of these fucking things? Tiger Woods' wife, 250 million dollars. 
She's a babysitter worth a quarter of a billion fucking dollars. Somebody, go ahead, somebody, explain, justify it. Justify it, what, what, he cheated on her? I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't give a fuck, he cheated on her. Great, the relationship's over right then. Kobe cheated, right? Shouldn't that relationship been over right then? Why did she hang around like some jaded cop for three years trying to get her fucking pension, right? Get that 10 years in. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's too harsh. That shit bothers me, man. Dude, there is an epidemic of gold digging whores in this country. And every night I put on the news and I'm waiting for someone to address it. Every night, never see it, you know? And every night I bring up gold digging whores and the whole crowd pulls back like I'm up here talking about Bigfoot, right? <laughs> like I'm saying the moon's made out of cheese or something. <laughs> talking about whores, people. They're everywhere. How many? How many more great men are gonna get chopped in half before we do something? Why is it so quiet in here? <laughs> God damn, I don't get it. What is it? Is it women? Do you think I'm calling you? I'm not calling any woman here a whore, okay? So don't pull back. That, that's not fair, okay? If you brought up wife beaters, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like pull back. I get it. There's guys hitting women, they need to be stopped. We gotta understand that gold digging whores are the wife beaters for men. <laughs> yeah, they are. Except we don't have that Rihanna lumped up photo in the end, so it's not obvious. It's in the eyes. It's in the lines in your face. It's in Mel Gibson's high-pitched voice on the answering machine. I had to give up my Laker tickets, right? That is the sound of a man being taken for everything he's got. I gotta tell you, sis, I'm envious of women, okay? I'm not saying your problems get solved, but at least they're taken seriously, you know? You got 1-800 numbers, you, get, you, got, you got ribbons, there's groups. People give a shit. Anything happens to a guy, it's just considered funny. Some woman cut her husband's dick off, threw in the garbage disposal, and turned it on. People thought it was hilarious. They were, hey, hey, Stumpy, nobody cares. You think if a guy removed a woman's titty and threw it in the dryer, anybody would be joking about it the next day? The entire country would grind to a halt. There'd be a moment of silence. The NFL would have some special colored headband everybody had to wear for an entire month. The most effeminate color they could possibly come up with. All my heroes are going down. Arnold Schwarzenegger, another great man. Another great man. Taken down by that gold digging whore of a maid he's got. And I'm not, I'm not saying he's not a piece of shit for doing what he did. It was a piece of shit move. But how come only he got chastised? What about the maid? Why was she called the maid the, that entire story? She was never called a whore, ever. <laughs> Just boggled my mind. She knew his wife, first name basis, played with their kids, fucked her husband in their own goddamn bed. That's right down the checklist. First ballot Hall of Fame whore, right there. <laughs> never. Why do you think she hooked up with him? Because of that 1987 flat top he's still rocking? The giant space between his teeth, I could put this mic cord through? Or do you think maybe it's all that kindergarten cop money laying around the goddamn bedroom? No, it's awful. It's a horrific thing to see as a guy, watching guys go through that shit, you know? And then there's no, there's no sort of examination of it. They just go, ah, he's an idiot. Hey, stupid. That guy's stupid, if that guy's stupid, what the fuck am I, right? <laughs> Does it even make sense? Why would you do that? Why would you accomplish all that and then fuck it up, hooking up with one of the ugliest human beings I've ever seen in my life? <laughs> Not saying I'm a prize, I'm just saying, you know? It's gotta be something beyond that, right? You know what I think it is? I think it comes down to the way he talks. You know? That dude should be unloading trucks in Transylvania. That should, be, that should have been the height of his success. But because he's a great man, he had the balls to move to America. Became famous for lifting weights. I lift weights, nobody gives a shit. He lifts weights, ah, ah. 
ah, ah, become super famous. Did he rest on his laurels? No, next challenge. I'm gonna become an actor, despite the fact that nobody can really understand me. <laughs> Against all odds, he starts making movies. Get down, there's a bomb, get out of there. <laughs> Becomes one of the biggest blockbuster stars of all time. What are you gonna do next, Arnie? I think I'm Maddie Kennedy. There's no fucking way you can do that. Bam, he does it. <laughs> Cherry on top, I'm running for governor of a state I can't even pronounce, and he wins the election. <laughs> Why wouldn't this guy think he couldn't bang his maid in his own bed and get away with it? This dude has been in the zone for over four decades. <laughs> four decades, nothing but net. Bang a maid in my own bed? Dude, that's a layup. Are you serious? I had a hit movie with the midget. I don't even need a condom. <laughs> right? And then what happens? The smoke clears. Then all these trolls come out of the woodwork and start judging this great man. All these fatties, these fucking old guys who never got any with their jowls coming on TV, absolutely reprehensible behavior. <laughs> what kind of a public servant? His, his, his legacy is shrouded. <laughs> like they have any idea what it's like to be tempted at that level, right? Like they have groupies as they waddle out to their mercury tracer <laughs> parked on the other side of a dumpster. Really, you're beating them off? This guy, he's not a great man anymore? Terminator doesn't count? Is that what the fuck you're telling me? Because he fucked Alice, really? He's still not a great man because he did that. Then that's, the whole thing's over? Anybody here think they could move to Austria, learn the language, become famous for working out, then be a movie star, then marry into their royalty and hold public office? How many lifetimes would you need? I'm on my third attempt at Rosetta Stone Spanish. All right? How can I judge these guys? I can barely handle the temptations of Facebook. I'm gonna judge Tiger Woods. I golf, I don't walk off the 18th hole and there's a busload of Scandinavian women waiting to fuck my brains out. Sorry ladies, gotta go home to the wife, right? No, it kills me. And there's no help out there for guys. There isn't. There's nothing out there to help you handle becoming rich and famous. There's nothing to prepare you for that, for that platoon of whores that's gonna form on the horizon, right? Like Braveheart, faces painted, skirts on, will run down the hill, they'll jump on your dick in front of your wife. They don't give a shit. It's not even a handbook out there. I saw one article written about it on, on the cover of Time Magazine. It said, why do so many rich, famous, and powerful men act like absolute pigs, right? And the article was actually written by a woman that's like me writing a book, the third trimester, and what to expect. <laughs> Ladies, you're gonna feel a pressure. How the hell would I know? You don't wanna hear that from me, right? Then why is this woman telling me what it's like to have a dick? That makes no sense. You have no idea what it's like to have a dick. 24-7, do it, do it, fuck it, do it. That's what it's saying. Do it, do it. Yeah, do it. That's how we survived as a species. Every man in here is programmed to fuck 85% of the women in this room, right? Yeah, we are. Do it, do it, fuck it, do it, you know? It's just that you won't. That's the only reason why we don't, you know? That's not you keeping your dick in check, you know? Some guy at, at Home Depot working there, he wants to fuck just as many women as a celebrity, right? But he, he can't do it because whores don't care about lumber, right? <laughs> But the second he hits the fucking lottery, all of a sudden, you know that, do it, do it, fuck it, do it, you know? That wasn't affecting his life. Then all of a sudden these whores show up, I'll do it, I'll suck it, I'll do it, right? <laughs> no, somebody's got, somebody's got to step up, all right? I'm not even blaming whores, really. Just, guys, we're fucking idiots. What are we doing? Why are we working so hard and then giving it all away to some chick who did three shifts at a, at a fucking Hooters, you know? <laughs> They're fucking bums sitting there with fucking Dorito dust in their cleavage, walking around with hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm sick of that shit, that's what the law says. 100 years ago, I could beat you with a fucking mop handle. and be like, well, that's what the law says. Doesn't make us right.
just slaps you on the back of your zit infested fucking shoulders and your awful man tit tank tops. I hope that happens to you. I hope the glass fucking digs into your fucking shoulder blade. And then I see you afterwards. Hey, how's it going? Enjoy the fucking show. That's great. And I grab you by the fucking hair, but you don't have any. You really have to come to this, people. You really have to come to it. I really hope all of you run into all those black people that you love so much here in Canada.
groups of fans that no one gives a fuck about. Four minutes left. <laughs> you with your rush fucking t-shirts. I beat the shit out of my girlfriend.